Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. Yes. Belts on. Carpentry again. Maybe this time I might even remember the name of some of my tools. Okay, getting right to it. How do we case this? So this is a super common problem, just like the echo in that room. So this is a super common problem where you've got a wall that is wider than the door jam. So what we usually do is we'll flush it up to one side of the wall, like it is on here. So on this other side, it's nice and flush, but we're left with this huge gap right here. And how do you put door casing on it? You know, when it's like, I mean, we're looking at at least three quarters of an inch there. What do you do? Well, that's what this video is about. So first off, we need to figure out what is it? Because walls and doors aren't always exactly even. So we're gonna check around this thing and try and figure out a thickness of material that we can add to this. So what we are going to do, um, this is called adding a jam extension. So we're just gonna rip a piece of wood that's gonna be just the right size for this. It's gonna go all the way around and it's just gonna be an extra little piece on the door and it's just gonna add a new reveal to the door casing and that'll be clear when we're done. Um, right here you can see there's one reveal. So if you look at this casing here, it's installed so that there's a quarter inch right here. We're gonna to have to add a second one. So it's gonna be like there's two pieces and that's typically how we do it. I said I would explain it later, but you know, didn't wanna leave you hanging. Okay, first things first, let's measure this. Right down at the bottom, we have almost seven eighths. Right about here, it's three quarters. That's about five eighths. About five eighths, three quarters. So it goes all over the place. Right here we got three quarters. A little under three quarters. A little under three quarters. Three quarters. And at the bottom we're down to seven eighths again. So I think we could really easily add three quarter inch to this whole thing. So let's go and um, get some trim and see how we do this. So you can use MDF trim for this or you can use prime pine. In this case, I have prime pine. So let's go see what I'm talking about. So I've just got all this baseboard kicking around here. It can be baseboard or casing depending on what you use it for. Um, that's what we're gonna use. So I need to rip some of this. First, I actually need to get a length. I forgot to do that. So now I'm gonna do that real quick. But let's cut it a little bit long. We can do it to 83. Uh, Why well, need to cut it a bunch? 82? 82 is looking pretty good. About this side. Yeah, it could almost be 82 and a quarter, but this part hangs down a little. I'm gonna call it 82 and an eight. Eighty two and one eight. We all good? Yep. Except this is not on zero. Always check your saws to make sure it's on zero. All right. Okay. Did I choose a nice straight one? Not really. I chose a crooked one. That's uh, okay. It'll be good enough for this. That wall's not that straight. Okay, now we need to make some three quarter inch rips. If you calibrate your saw well, if you have one of these, I love these DeWalt saws, but my saw is calibrated that I can just use this little measuring guy right here, three quarters of an inch. You can always double check it, but yeah, it's bang on. Love it when that happens. Um, now we gotta rip this thing. And I definitely like to use these on table saws. It's smart. I forget to use them on other saws sometimes. But yeah, what we need is three pieces, all at three quarters of an inch. Make sure I'm set at zero here. Yep, yep. Blade height, yep.
Okay, now we're going to take our combination square. You guys, I kind of liked slidey marky thingy better, but you guys were giving me a hard time and I remembered combination square. Take our combination square set at a quarter inch and we're going to make a few lines here because we need to make that reveal. And one in the middle. So it's pretty basic. It's just kind of like putting a second set of casing on there. That's not quite as hard. But yeah, jam extensions. If we had to shorten this whole video down to one thing, how do you fix this? Jam extensions. Okay, where were we? Now what we're gonna do is nail these on to our line. So right here. And you wanna hold your gun sideways so that the brad nail doesn't come shooting out because of the grain. Or gangster style, if you guys remember correctly. We've got another line right here. Let's get another couple of nails. Almost at a nail sear. So I'm making sure to put the nice side out. Now you don't see much of this, um, but yeah. And the nice side out, you definitely don't want your cut edge sticking out or it's going to look pretty bad. Although we're going to have a piece that looks like that in a minute, as you'll see, once we nail the next one on. Okay. Next one. It's going to be that third piece that I ripped on the table saw. We got 31 and three quarters. Okay, so this is the other piece we ripped. Now, this is where MDF can be a little bit nicer because we've got this, you know, sort of rough, um, basically finger joint pine inside here. But for the job I'm on right now, it's gonna be good enough. Wish I remembered my number. Is it 31 and three quarters or 31 and a quarter? I think it was 31 and three quarters. <laughs> Me too, I'm gonna check. Yeah, it's three quarters. So this is the stuff, if I wasn't busy trying to tell you guys things, I wouldn't forget my measurement. I would have been back there installing it by now. Okay, 31 and three quarters. Right here. Okay, so this, it's important to give the edge a little sand. Find your nice side, but sand this down. You wanna try and get the saw blade marks out of there, those sort of circular marks. You're only gonna see a quarter inch of this though, and it's gonna get caulked, so it's gonna fill in a lot of the inconsistencies. The really important thing is that you round over your edge. And um, if you're all set up, you could actually use a router with a little 1 8 round over bit on here, but if you're patient and you got a piece of sandpaper, you can get it done all the same. I don't have very many jam extensions to do, so there's really no need for me to have a router and a roundover bit set up. It will do a more uniform job though, but a quick roundover on an edge with sound, sound paper, sandpaper, shouldn't take too long. All right, that looks good. We're done. Okay, so um, oh, where'd my mark go? Can't even see my little quarter inch mark anymore. That was a snug fit. Just how I like it. Here, I think I can eyeball that. Eyeball that quarter inch. I'd say it's right about there. Okay, now we have a jam to put casing on. So if you were only here to know the one thing, man, the echo, every time that door is open, it just like pours out. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I sure can. Um, now at this point, we can just treat this like a regular door and case it out. So if that's all you're here for, well, it's done.
But um, if you want to see how it looks when we're done, I got one last thing to do. Um, I'm going to just actually turn the camera off now because basically it's as simple as marking my reveals and cutting my casing, which I have a bunch of videos for. So we'll kind of montage that from now on. Testing those joints. Whew. It's always nerve wracking. <laughs> there we go. That's a cased out door. We'll nail it off and then it's done. I don't like to nail too close to the joints. As you can see, I chose a casing that matched this old one. So they still make one that it's basically the same. You know, there's a lot of old Vancouver houses have this style of casing in. If you ever rip this stuff off, it's beautiful, clear fur. Uh, if you ever strip the paint off, you can make it look real good. But um, yeah, anyway, so that's why we're doing this. There's only two of them. Why not make it match? Ooh. The one thing you just got to remember is now you have a very small strip to nail into. So if you miss it, then your casing's not doing its job of strengthening the door assembly as a whole. This casing is all part of it. it makes the whole door jam stronger. Almost there. Yeah, that's good. So that's how you do it when you got that nasty thing. So come take an up close look. You can see we now have a double reveal, right? But it looks better than you thought it was going to, doesn't it? Um, I'm not one who likes to add, like I don't like to add this strip and make it flush because I was taught a long time ago by some of my earlier bosses that those joints crack, right? Whenever you butt joint two pieces of wood uh, to make it look like one piece of wood, that's gonna crack down the road, guaranteed. This is gonna look good, you know, till somebody decides to rip the door out. These look good. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. Oh, last thing is you remember it wasn't totally even down at the bottom, it was like seven eighths. So we do have that gap there and I'm just gonna have to caulk that and live with it. It's no big deal. The rest of it looks awesome. If you were doing a, um, if you were doing like a stain grade trim or something like that, you might have to carve out a little bit of the plaster to get that gap to close up so that it all looks nice and perfect and tight. I've showed you that in other videos. Um, some of you guys liked that, some of you didn't. That's okay, the video did well. And the information's out there. You know, there's a different way to handle every situation. And this one was a nice easy one where we add those three quarter inch strips. Real quick and easy, not a big deal. If you have tapered ones, uh, I don't know, that's harder. Maybe that's another video. Anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope you guys are doing well out there. And um, yeah, time for me to go and finish trimming the rest of this place out off camera. Till the next one.